considered the best Star Wars game of all time, Knights of the Old Republic is fondly remembered for its writing, world building, and the choices you made. As my first RPG experience, it catapulted my 9 year old self into this epic sweeping adventure across the stars. 20 years have gone by, games have changed, my tastes have changed. Oh my God! So that begs the question, does KOTOR hold up in 2023? Let's find out. Going into KOTOR, I expected a less than rosy experience. A combat system that was never replicated in Dragon Age or the Obsidian CRPGs isn't a good sign. Ready. And how the game probably comes off naive, simplistic, and too black and white. Don't judge me. I learned a long time ago that if I want to survive down here, I've got to look out for number one. Yet, I also do miss that wide-eyed, uncomplicated adventure. After playing several CRPGs over the years, a grand, sweeping, optimistic power fantasy does sound nice to be honest. It's a dark Jedi. This fight is too much for us. We gotta stay back. I guess it just depends on the execution in the end. So let's start with how the game effectively sets a clear-cut conflict from the very beginning. That was one of the Jedi accompanying Bastila. Damn, we could have used her help. The Republic is on its back foot. The Sith Empire feels close to victory. Wherever you go, your comrades in arms fall to the Sith's overwhelming might. These Sith must be the advanced boarding party for the Republic! The game immediately plays into that underdog narrative, and it works. In addition, you learn what's at stake early on, and how finding this gifted Jedi can help turn the tide of the war. But that's not all, because the game's first act extends the stakes and emotional hook to your choices and the universe. You witness the Sith gunning down unarmed civilians. That's how we Sith deal with smart mouth aliens. The powerless being extorted. No, help! Somebody help! They're going to kill me! And how racist individuals are painted in a vile, ignorant light. We cannot sit idly by while aliens blight our glorious planet. Combining the player choice with these simple but uncomplicated more dynamics has you feeling engaged with what's going on. Thank you, Upworlder. You have saved us from a fate worse than death. How the first act ends with the Sith obliterating the planet after all those people you met and possibly affected their lives really punctuates why you have to stop the big bad. Wipe this pathetic planet from the face of the galaxy. And that's where the game opens up to a sprawling galaxy. After receiving your Jedi training that involves lots and lots and lots of wildlife population control, you're tasked with finding four artifacts to locate the Sith Empire's secret weapon, the Star Forge. It's here where the game finally opens up with your choice to travel to Tatooine, Kashyyyk, Manan, and Korriban in whatever order. Though I highly insist in that specific order, but I'll get to that later. Throughout the journey, you'll be solving people's problems, tracking down artifacts, and misusing your force powers to get free docking fees. You know, I don't think you need to pay the fee. We'll let it go this time. With the world building, you get to learn about the different cultures, like the planet of Manan, where they're so beholden to neutrality. I got in trouble for threatening a Sith officer after she provoked me. Are you threatening me? It's illegal to try to start a fight in Ato City. Constable, over here! Though nothing a little force mind trick can't fix. I'll get you for this, Jedi. The Sith won't stand for this. And it has to be said, the grandiose music by Jeremy Sewell really elevates the galaxy trotting experience with his unique, more fantastical take on Star Wars. Yeah. 
Now, I can't say that these experiences were consistently smooth. The game's difficulties start to scale disproportionately. I've never been a fan of puzzles and I definitely had to swap over to my phone to figure them out. And circling back to the planet order, I really insist on that specific order because the way the planets are paced feels like this is really the ideal order to play through the game. Tatooine and Kashyyyk have a low-key stake feel to them, largely fighting the local groups like the Tusken Raiders and lots of wildlife critters, the low-level threats and things like backtracking makes the two planets feel middling. But it's where Manan and Korban are best played in the second half because not only are they unique, unfamiliar worlds with distinct cultures, be it a planet religiously wedded to neutrality, with both sides teetering on throwing the first punch, or a planet full of... Sith wannabes. As a kid, I played the exact opposite order, and boy, ending with Tatooine or Kashyyyk took a big hit to the momentum of the story especially since the final planet in this order, comes after one of gaming's biggest twists. After getting the third star map, you're ambushed and captured. But a little prison break here, and you come across the big bad villain. Darth Malak. It's here where a defining moment in gaming happens. Malak drops a truth bomb, that stuck with people for over two decades. Yep, you're Revan. Captured and brainwashed by the Jedi to be used against the Sith. And truth be told, as a kid, this twist didn't do much for me. It didn't feel like it really affected anything. Big Z and I will stick by you. We owe you our lives. Everyone in my party accepted that I wasn't the same guy pre-Jedi brainwashing. I suppose you've proven yourself to be a friend of the Republic by your actions so far. It's not like you, the player, is going to turn against a Jedi after being an angel up to now. But even if I think those are issues, I do think the underlying message is that you aren't defined by your past, but who you are now. Thank you for helping this woman. It may not seem like such a great thing to you, but you're making a difference. For whatever it means, may the Force be with you. Given this game's uncomplicated, hopeful tone, I do in the end think it works. But there is a complication. Basila sacrifices herself to buy you time to escape. With Basila captured and the final star map discovered, you now head to the Star Forge, where the third act begins but with a not-so-exciting detour. On your way to the Star Forge, your ship is pulled onto this unknown planet by some powerful device where you encounter a long-forgotten alien species, once a proud and mighty empire, now reduced to primitive tribes. Like Kashyyyk and Tatooine, I didn't find this planet to be all that interesting or rich with personality, just slaying a bunch of tribal warriors and their rancors. Whichever tribe you side with opens a temple so you can deactivate the device. Just before you get to it though, you meet a familiar face. Revan, I knew you'd come for me. Malik turned Basila to the dark side. I won't lie, it does feel uninspired. Her reasoning Sounding pretty childish, like how the Jedi Order used her as a weapon, or that they were afraid of her being too powerful, which is something that really wasn't a concern before. That's where it feels like it's a shame that they didn't explore her abandonment issues. You were eager to send me to the Jedi even though I didn't want to go. So there is friction with the Jedi Order. Now, it's not the greatest explanation, but it feels like there's something there compared to... The Jedi Council gladly used my battle meditation in their wars, but they still treated me like a child. Either way, you defeat her and she flees the scene. Where she flees to is where it all ends, and where the gameplay really falls apart for me.
the final stretch of the game really shows the problems with the game's combat system. As you board the Starforge, you are met with waves upon waves of elite Sith Troopers and Dark Jedi, who all soak up so much damage and keep flooding in. It's uninspired and mindless. It's in direct contrast to the early game, where most enemies could only survive 2-4 to four hits, but now even with your lightsaber, it feels like it takes 7 strikes to down the weakest enemy here. Now enemies getting more health as the game progresses isn't a new concept, but this onslaught of endless waves of damaged spongy enemies feels overboard. I do often hear how RPGs tend to struggle in scaling past the early levels, enemies feeling artificially inflated, battles taking even longer to play out, and way more abilities to juggle around. Now, Jedi Fallen Order isn't an RPG, but I do think how it handles the late game by throwing in a menagerie of different enemy types for you to strategically readjust to is far more interesting and avoids the artificial stat buffing found in KOTOR and other RPGs. Now thankfully, what the game lacks in the Final Combat side of things is made up in the emotional department. This is not possible. You have rejected the dark side. Your face off with Basila ends with her defeat, where she asks you to strike her down. But in typical yet endearing Star Wars fashion, never. You choose to spare her. Nothing could make me feel safer than to be loved by you. But I wanted to end on this touching point because Kotor is ultimately about redemption. Beyond the diverse worlds, cool set pieces, and all the planet hopping adventures, it's about hope, growth, and becoming better. I must give you my thanks. Because of you, I am once again welcome within the Jedi Order. We all have some darkness in us, and it's why seeing people struggle and overcoming that is still so endearing. Bestia, it is not too late for you to be saved. Now, yes, I do think Malik's demise does sort of go against his theme, as he doesn't redeem himself, though he does at least lament how things could have gone differently. I could have returned to the light as you did. So, at least the writers tried. In spite of many things aging ungracefully, like the combat, the pacing, and some of the writing, what I ultimately got out of this was an indulgent, epic sweeping adventure full of optimism, hope, and finding redemption in anyone we can, including ourselves. And that is what makes KOTOR worth revisiting in 2023. I'm Sam Blips, and thanks for watching.